Once I was on the ship, I was never off the ship until I was sent home. I was basically house arrest. They did not trust me because I formed attachments during love affair. I was in this gray zone of too well-trained to be discarded, but too emotional to be trusted. Uh, I see. And because I was a Draco hybrid, uh -huh. this confused the Germans because Dracos are noted for not showing love, affection, or any of those things. They were noted for exactly what the Germans had expected of me, which was lots of sex with, with uh -huh. no no attachments. Uh -huh. And so I was an anomaly, yeah. something that they didn't know what to do with. So they chipped me into the ship's computer. Oh, the freighter I was on was called the Zollheimen, and it's spelled with an X. Uh -huh. um, and it was old, even for then. It was one of the cigar-shaped aluminum outsides. It, it was aluminum on the outside, and it had shielding that made it shimmer. Uh -huh. So it was really very pretty. Uh, I only saw it the one time when they were when it landed and they put me on it. Um, it was probably a kilometer long. Oh. Uh, a little over half mile, and uh, I was one of three navigators they had on board. Uh, was it from the the old days when they had the, their first? Uh, the, you mean the cigar shape? Where did that come from? Is it is it the, like one of the originals? Was it was it like a submarine based or something? No. It was submarine based. It was the first kind of design after the Hanabu. Uh -huh. um, the Germans are very waste not what not. Uh -huh. They will keep using technology until it completely falls apart and then they'll melt it down and recycle it. Until then it's in use as long as it can be stitched back together. Uh, there are still bases with card punch computers. You know, uh -huh. the cardboard right. cards? Right, right. There, right. Are still, there are still bases using those. So um, as long as it functions, it's used. When it, stop, when it can no longer be repaired, then it will be recycled. Uh -huh. And if they can upgrade it, in the meantime, they will. But uh, nothing gets thrown away as long as it's usable. Uh-huh. So this was an older ship. It was obsolete when they put me on it in 1990. Yeah. Um, we transported mostly people in various stages of war. We would transport soldiers usually Americans, people like Randy Kramer. Uh -huh. um, I'm not saying he was ever on my ship, okay? Uh -huh. I'm saying those were the kinds of people we took, were usually Americans. They were usually Kruger or Department of Defense, you know, possibly people like Jason Rice. Uh-huh. All I knew was we went to Mars, we 
we got our hold filled with these humans. Uh -huh. And then we went to battle. And we would drop them off on the planet. Okay, so that was like a military freighter. Yes. Okay. It was, and then <clears throat> while we were there, uh -huh. they would capture prisoners of war. And we would fill the hold with the prisoners of war. And then we would take them either to a German cyborg conversion factory, or if all of our factories were already busy, we would take them to um, planetary corporations. Uh -huh. And yes, they were our enemy, but we would get more advanced tech than what we had in exchange for these prisoners uh -huh. of war. So it was from the perspective of the two factions, it was a win-win situation. Uh -huh. And uh, most of the cyborgs from both factions were, ex were sold for advanced tech anyway. The Germans mostly got technology from the Draco or the Mantids, um, not the Mars version, the, the Mantid Empire. Okay. Uh, there are subjects, subject races subjected to the Draco who would also share technology in exchange for protection. The, the best way to describe it is the Germans were running a protection racket. Uh-huh. I see. Mafia style. I see. So from from whom? From the Draco? From the... us. No, Isn't from... that the way the mafia always does it? You sell protection from yourself? Ah, I see. Okay. Yeah. Come on. No. You have a mafia in your country too. <laughs> but, so. but 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 those they would be uh, they would be racketing would be the worlds that are already subject to the drink or not. Yeah. Okay. Worlds that were already subject to the Draco. Um The Germans have a reputation in space as if you rebel against the Draco, okay? The Draco don't bother you until you stop paying taxes, uh -huh. and then they will come in and they'll spend some time trying to talk you into paying your taxes uh -huh. and going back to being respectable citizens. Uh -huh. If you can, if you persist in that you are in rebellion, then they will send in the Germans. And the Germans have a reputation for being worse than the Draco. They will come in and you don't even have to use weapons, you just drop rocks. Yeah. The, the potential energy of these rocks falling is worse than any of the bombs that we currently have on Earth. It will take out entire regions. You drop enough rocks and the planet will break up. And I know in other altars, I've brought the Armada out of hyperspace, materializing in orbit, and the planet would immediately surrender to the Draco. Uh -huh. They did not want to deal with us at all. So we have reached the point where our reputation is so bad that we can sell protection. Okay, you pay us enough and we'll tell the Draco we won't we won't harm you. And the Draco know we're doing it and they think it's hilarious. <laughs> They're like, you guys are learning. Oh, my God. 
what do these people pay to the Germans mostly? Whatever advanced tech they have is what we go for first. Okay. And then food. Uh -huh. We have we have a thousand plus colonies with a billion or more people each. Food is always a big deal. Uh -huh. An army moves on its stomach. Uh -huh. uh, food that's not from a replicator, especially. Um, what else do they do? Um, officially, we're only allowed beer and vodka. Uh -huh. But other drugs are rampant through through the enlisted forces. Um, you've got people who are hyped up on on enhancement drugs to be at peak performance, and yeah. the enlisted men in Nachtwaffen. These are people who are not officers. Uh -huh. These are people who are doing the groundwork. When we, when we are involved in actually controlling a population instead of just bombing them and dropping rocks on them. Uh -huh. These are the guys that go down there and do the work. So they're constantly hyped up, ready to go into battle, but they're not usually in battle. They're usually stuck on a ship somewhere or at a base or a space station. And so they're, there's a lot of bootlegged, things for them so the troops that you were you were you were carrying all the time mm -hmm. um do the do the jumps uh because you're you're saying hyperspace do the jumps uh vary in the length in, of time depending on the on the actual physical distance like if you're jumping from yes. here to mars or from mars to another constellation and what are the the time spans on that? If you if you jump from Mars to I don't know whatever system another another uh, constellation or something. Well, going from Mars to Vega Prime uh -huh. takes. There's a portal, which is like a wormhole uh -huh. that goes part of the way. Then you come out, and you go into hyperspace to the next portal. And then you follow the portal through the star. Uh -huh. And the whole trip takes about three weeks. Whoa, that's a long time. It's not like teleportation as mm -hmm. we imagine it. All right. Teleportation in real time only goes the speed of light. Uh -huh. You're talking, this is, what, 40? I can't remember the exact numbers. How many light years is Vega Prime away okay. from here? Yeah. You know? uh -huh. So it's still faster than teleportation. Okay. But what you do is you step you step out of this level. Uh-huh. And usually you step into 4D because it's the land of ghosts. All right. And you step there, you take the whole ship and everybody on it and you you're in this warp. Uh -huh. And the ship's computer sets up the warp, but the psionic ability of the navigator 
decides which dimension you're in. Uh -huh. So I usually went into 4D because there are not as many physical objects there. You can travel without running into things. And so your whole ship is no longer in 3D. In the physical, you okay. Are, you are no longer in th this physical reality. You are in the next dimension up. Uh -huh. And you're going along. And space and time and physics operate differently there. And you have to watch what people are thinking because they can materialize objects there. Man manifest things, okay. Manif they can manifest, manifest lots of things there. And so you've got phantom objects and you've got thought forms. People, people's nightmares, thought forms. Uh, dead people will appear on the ship because you are in the realm of the dead. And you have this time period that you're traveling. Now, when you decide to go back into 3D, you have to make sure all this other stuff stays behind. Uh -huh. That's the navigator's job. All the other stuff stays behind, and none of the people are in the walls, or the floors, or the ceiling, or each other. You know, there are horror nightmares of when they were first developing this technology. But <clears throat> you also have to make sure that when you're coming back into 3D, you're not in the middle of a star or a planet or an asteroid or any other physical object or in the belly of uh, an energy feeder. And that, that, is, that is where your psionics kicks in. You have to foresee it, mm -hmm. right? Okay. You have to foresee it. You have to mm -hmm. be able to be in one di dimension and see into another one at the same time. Is that like foreseeing and the future? basically and, and and making your choice depending on what you see there or how I never thought of it in terms of foreseeing the future all right um, because there is no really there's no future so you're basically seeing what you what your choices are right you're, you're seeing what's there and your real choice is do I want to come out there or do I want to move over? a bit uh -huh. and it's it's something because you're chipped into the computer the computer has a say in it too so you're not just you uh -huh. um, it's very hard to explain that part and i had already been initiated into the Order of the Black Sun. So I was already AI in a lot of ways when I was chip. And that was something that also confused the Germans because when you're when you're Black Sun, you're not supposed to have attachment issues. You're supposed to be completely AI. So, so I confused them. Apathetic, emotionless, cold, calculating. The only the only Emotions that Draco and Black Sun have are anger. Uh huh. So Black Sun, and the the Black Goo, you still after ingesting that, you still have anger. You still have anger, uh -huh. and you use the energy of that anger to power the psionics. The psionics, and the end effect is you're not dressed well. Our uniforms were like them, so. Um, you end up basically like Darth Vader. So the crew of the ship, how many people were there? And who was the captain? And how, how, was, how, how were things around there? The captain was a German man. Almost all the highest officers are men. I, I can't remember his face or his name. 
And considering that most of the men were kept at about 35, this is really odd because he had gray hair. Uh -huh. Very odd. Uh, he usually wore bridge blacks, which are the dress version of the everyday uniform. You wore fancier clothes on the bridge. Uh -huh. It was a formal occasion, but not party formal. Party formals, the uniforms were white. But on the bridge, they were black. Where the guys that were working, like the guys that the mechanics that kept, or the guys that kept things clean, they would wear grays, uh -huh. uh, gray coveralls. And those things were comfortable, the coveralls. Probably the best fitting of any of the uniforms. Uh, the women tended to be in things that were form-fitting and made us look feminine, and unless we were in a battle situation. Uh -huh. In a battle situation, we would be in the female version of armor. And it wasn't like they draw in comic books. We were actually covered in armor like the guys. Uh -huh. <laughs> they didn't. They didn't want us dead. Um, Lieutenant Val Kielin was never in armor in Nachtwaffen because she was never off the ship. Uh -huh. but, um, the crew, how many people were there approximately? Or how many people did you see at at, the, at one time? I only saw about 30 people at one time. Uh -huh. But being connected to the ship's computer, I was aware that there were about 500. Okay. And most of them were involved in taking care of the cargo. Uh -huh. uh, because they were very close quarters for the people involved. Uh, so they had to be fed. They had to have sleeping arrangements, blankets, you know, every everything that you would expect in a bunker situation. Right. So which was what they were in. So you said that you were you you would go for three weeks, that's three human human time. Three Earth three Earth. Three Earth. Okay. On this trip. Okay. So they would be they would have to be lodged, fed, you know. That's just to get from here to Vega Prime, we had colonies way out. Some some of the time we would be taking a jump that would be from Earth through a zigzag uh -huh. of port systems. And so we would be just zigzagging through portals. And the portal the wormholes take so much time off the trip that it's amazing. You're just like, poof, you're there. And even going through hyperspace, it's longer because so you do have to maneuver physically. Right. I had an impression that the wormhole and the hyperspace are the same thing. So what is the difference then? No. You said that taking a wormhole takes the time off. That means the wormhole is much faster, right? The wormhole is a whole lot faster. It's a whole lot I faster. will try to get a picture. Okay, good. Okay. Can you see this? Yes. Okay. The wormhole...
is like a tunnel uh -huh. that you go from here and through it and then there. Okay, yeah. All right. So uh -huh. if you're starting off here and you want to go here, uh -huh. in hyperspace, you have to go all the way around. Uh-huh. Where the, here, it cuts a whole lot off. Right. Because this part, okay, you can jump from, from this point to here, uh -huh. where you're going through here. And then you come out into real space, uh -huh. and you go through the wormhole, and you're back in real space, okay. and then you can jump to your, to your next point. Okay, so by jump you mean teleportation, right? No, I mean hyperspace. Hyperspace, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, the question is, why can't you jump from point A to point B straight? Why do you need the wormhole? Is there is there no technology that allows you to just open a open a wormhole or something, a portal, and just jump from A to B? No. Okay. What you can you can you can use the hyperspace uh -huh. to go from Mars directly to Vega Prime. Uh -huh. It takes three months. All right. And during those three months, you've got all these people in the hold. And you look outside and it's, it's, like, it's like a tunnel that is reaching and grabbing for you. And you've got all this stuff manifesting out there. Uh -huh. And the longer you are in a hyperspace tunnel, the more stuff is manifested. And there's enough stuff already out there manifested that you already collect some of it. And if you happened to have an energy feeder stuck to your ship, what when you went in and you boot it off while you're there, still there uh. for the next guy that comes along. And by that time, it's starving because its regular food is not in hyperspace. And so it will go, boom, and you'll have a really hard time getting it off your ship that time. So uh, there's a lot out there. I see. Uh, the the energy feeders they can look like horseshoe crabs they can look like amoebas they uh -huh. can look like um, jellyfish some look some look like angels oh yeah you know, these big amorphous body looking things with wings and they'll just come after you um, and they'll send out sort of a siren song while they're at it but the time frame if you can find a natural wormhole or part of the builder race system to use it it can cut months or even years off of your time travel time that's why we use them uh -huh. and i've got the star chart the map from here to Ve from mars to vega prime in my head that one i know uh -huh. so that's why i've been using that one is because except for the light years distance that one i have a map in my head okay so it I'm going to assume that's a route that I took a lot because I can remember the route. 
and I don't remember it like in words or, you know, amorphous computer directions. I remember it as a 3D plus time visual. And Hyperspace is a combination of the ship's computer doing the calculations with combined with the navigator's psionic abilities. Uh -huh. And it's basically the same concept as the Montauk chair worked uh -huh. off of. How fast is the hyperspace travel then? Is it faster than the speed of light? Is it slower than the speed of light? It's faster than the speed the of light. Speed of light, okay. Because you're taking a shortcut through another dimension. But it's still it's it's not instantaneous because we're talking light years distance, right? Right. Okay. And then if you find on along the way, if you can chart it so that you jump from a wormhole to a wormhole, once you're in a wormhole situation, you're you're moving much faster then. Yes, the okay. wormholes are almost instantaneous. Almost instantaneous. Okay. And what you were taking from um, from New York to Mars, Aris Prima was a teleportation slash hyperspace, which took twenty minutes to. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Interesting. What about time travel? When you had to go back to the base, did you have to also spend like three weeks? And that would make it. Let's say you go from Mars to Vega three weeks, and then the three weeks back. Does it make it six weeks until you come back to the base on Mars, or do you have a shortcut to maybe make a time loop to come back at the same time, or how how does that work? How does that work? We're gonna call this regular time, but we're gonna compare it to a river. Let's see. When you are here. And you want to go there. You jump here. Uh -huh. And in this realm, you can step back into that river at any point you want. You can go from there, and you're going along here. Uh -huh. And then you jump, you jump to that physical location uh -huh. but upstream I see so you've also traveled in time I see and no that doesn't put you in another timeline uh -huh. you're in the same timeline I see so so the physical distance and, and the, the physical time can be then varied. You can you can yes. you can jump to a distance, but to any time period you wish. And that means yeah. th and that, that we're talking hyperspace right now. This is a hyperspace, hyperspace traveling. So when you when you're coming back, you can actually the physical distance takes that much time, but you are you're coming back to any time you want on Mars. Yeah. Do you? Okay. Which is very handy. <laughs> yes, it is. So you still have to you can spend do the... lots of things at once. Right, <laughs> right. So you still, whatever you do with that technology, you still have to spend the physical time of three weeks or whatever on the travels, right? There is no avoiding you that. Still spend the phys you still experience okay. the travel time. The travel time as being weeks, months, and so on. But you can, it's, it's yeah. linear as far as how you experience it. You're here, right. you, your travel time, you're there, uh -huh. and yeah. even the backing up a little bit in the, in the stream so that you're getting there ahead of where, then, then even that is experienced linearly. Right. One after the other after the other. I see. Just like you can experience time in your natural life on earth one thing after the other okay and then and then what was on your missions then was it the requirement to jump from say your your jump you you you're departing from mars at two o'clock 
in the afternoon was it a requirement to get to whatever lo you know destination location at the same time or different time later earlier what was the it was it was a variation on mission uh -huh. they had a time frame that they wanted you there uh -huh. so you the... had a due date okay like a window you had a window okay okay interesting but if you travel around backwards in time too much you have to deal with the time and with the time they... core is it is it a corporation or a core as in a, a military core or is it just a a military core a military core and who is who is in this core uh they're part of the galactic authority i see and we're going to talk about that later because it's it's a big subject i guess uh the galactic authority is what's left of the governing bodies that were in place at the time of the builder race uh -huh. I see. and they were a collection of the advanced races at the time and over time, they've added new, and as older races died out, they left. And they're still, they're still in charge, and even the Draco have to submit to them. Okay. But at the same time, they're not as powerful as they have been in the past. But they have several divisions they have the guardians are their military the council of five are their courts um, the time core is who enforces messing with time because this time stream has to stay constant for everything to work right uh -huh. and if you go back and mess with things then you've messed with the timeline and that doesn't just affect you it affects everybody else in the timeline uh -huh. and so the time core is set up to keep things keep things from being me messed up for everybody else just because somebody got selfish uh -huh. so you said that once you've jumped too much that creates a problem so how if how much is too much backwards. if you jump back yeah, right if you jump back too much in time for example when as you were as you go back to the base right to mars is well that, yeah how? they don't they don't complain so much about you've been traveling and you you've cut off your journey okay that they complain about what they complain about is you're going back in time and changing things uh, -huh. uh like we have multiple missions going on to rescue a colony that the guardians destroyed uh-huh the Galactic Authority told the Germans to evacuate, that they had gone too far, that they didn't have authorization to go that far, and that they needed to evacuate those people back to the solar system. And the Germans, being the Germans, said, F you, which was not a smart move. Even the Draco told them it was not a smart move. And the Galactic Authority destroyed the planet with several billion people. So that doesn't sound like they are very <laughs> benevolent right there. Because not all of these people are military and it's a it's a it's a planet, so it's a whole we're talking about like a whole collective of beings there. 
Why would they be they, destroyed? They think in terms of race, races rather than individuals. Uh -huh. uh, in the 400 years that the Germans have had acquired this planet, they had been committing atrocities in the neighboring worlds, capturing people, turning them into cyborgs for sale, basically terrorizing the entire neighborhood. And the Galactic Authority did warn them ahead of time to evacuate the people. And they didn't. So the place was destroyed because it was a threat to its neighbors. And now we've got every ship that the Germans have, some that the Draco lent us, and help from Kruger to go back in time and rescue those people. And even with all of that, we didn't have enough space on the ships to get them all out. Now, I've been seeing these photographs of all these ships coming through the sun. Uh -huh. Those are the ships returning those people to solar system colonies. Those, uh -huh. those, those dart-shaped, the dart-shaped ships, like this straight arrow head ones? Uh -huh. Okay. So we're not talking so, about we're not talking about Guardian fleet coming into our no, system. No, we're not talking about the Guardian fleet. Although there are some of their ships here too. Uh huh. We're we're talking about the German people from that colony are being returned to the solar system as the Galactic Authority ordered. Uh -huh. So and, um, and that was allowed. They were allowed to actually go back. So that's why the, they took out the planet because they knew that there, there, there is a way around it. And now the Germans will. Yeah, so they, now that they, the Germans will see that they're, you know, the, the authority is serious and they've learned their lesson. Now they're going to, you know, make an extra effort to rescue all these people. And, you know, that, that, that was that. And there are not enough ships to rescue all of them. There is a, in chemistry, it's called the law of diminishing returns. Uh -huh. It gets harder and harder and harder to go back to the same spot in time as you go. And it kind of wears out the fabric of time in that spot. And we have reached the point where nobody else can go to that spot and rescue those people. And we've only rescued half. Uh -huh. So the Germans learned a very costly lesson. Okay. Now, I don't know what the rest of the story is going to be. My understanding from the guardians that I interact with is that all of the German colonists, all of those colonies are going to be sent back to the solar system. And I don't know where we're going to put all those people. Honestly, we're talking over a trillion people. A trillion. And we think... And... We think we're crowded with the five billion we have on Earth now. So, okay, uh, how do you get that centralized? If you have billions, many hundreds of billions of people in your space colony network, is it centralized at all? I mean, or do they just let them develop as they will, or? <laughs> What they did was they had like a common culture uh -huh. that they called the Federation. And once a colony became self-supporting, it was considered to be its own country, uh -huh. its own nation. Right. In the Federation. 
Uh -huh. It was self-governing, self-supporting. Uh, they would be required to give so many soldiers per year. To the fleet. Yeah. To the fleet. And uh, if they were in the Draco Empire, they were required to pay taxes to the Draco Empire. So the Draco were real happy about these colonies because they were paying taxes. But they're not real happy with what the Galactic Authority has done. And I don't know what's going to happen with the contracts because the Draco are really nitpicky about their contracts. So um, I don't know if those people are going to have to continue to pay them taxes once they're back in the solar system as refugees or not. But um, my understanding from the guardians that I've interacted with is that all of the human factions out in space are going to be pushed back into the solar system inside the Oort cloud and that we're going to be trapped in here uh -huh. until, until we can learn to live without pecking order slavery. How, how does that correlate with what the Draco are doing? If, if, if we're talking about galactic authority and all the atrocities, many people would say that it all starts with the Draco and it ends with the Draco. Once the Draco are gone, we may we may or may not sort it out, but we have to sort of first get rid of the real problem, which is the Draconian Empire. The Draconian Empire are not the cause of the atrocities. Uh -huh. The humans are. We go out there. Now, the history that, that the Guardians told me was that every 15 to 20,000 years, we escape our planet. We go out into space, we create all kinds of atrocities, the Guardians have to bring us back, uh -huh. that they give us a choice between keeping pecking order slavery or becoming a galactic level zero civilization. And that so far we have always chosen to keep pecking order slavery. And at that, when we make that choice, then they allow a natural catastrophe to dump us back into the Stone Age. And we have to start over. Okay. Now, that cyclic catastrophe could be averted. They have the technology to do that. Uh -huh. And they would if we chose to give up slavery. And by slavery, you mean the space it, slavery? It's, it's slavery on Earth. It's debt slavery on Earth. Uh -huh. You know, the working man who has to work every hour of his waking moment just to pay his bills. It's the pecking order where you have elites and then managers and then people who work all their lives and never get anything. It's the the religions that are based on extraterrestrials telling us what to do instead of our own innate our own innate spirituality there are real religions on this planet uh, mostly shamanism and nature faiths anything that has a sky god you're worshiping an et uh -huh. And they want all this stuff stopped. They want us to get to the point where we value each other, where we take care of every single individual on the planet, regardless of how we figure their worth is. Whether, they, whether you think they deserve it or not, they get the basics, housing, clothing, food, basic education for free. Okay. It costs nothing. This is what 
the galactic authority wants of us. What about the Draco that are taxing the planet then? Is it part of our like overall school system <laughs> of the civilization or what? The Draco that are taxing the planet will take their cut of whatever the gross planetary product is. So they are allowed to do this. They're allowed to do this. Why? Our our ancestors made a deal with them. Who did? We're talking back what Bible yeah. calls Adam and Eve. Uh huh. Uh huh. The serpent in the garden. The serpent in the garden was an Anunnaki Draco <laughs> hybrid. Okay. <laughs> I believe his name went to be Enki. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. So but, right. <laughs> right. So, so are we are we supposed to also figure out that we have this contract and maybe terminate it somehow, or not? Is it possible? Some contracts cannot be terminated. All right. I'm going to ask from my point of view, an American. It would be like Kansas saying, "I don't want to be part of the United States anymore." Uh -huh. How far do the Chechnyans get in your in the Soviet Union? Right. Okay. You know that that's what we're talking about. You're part of something greater. You're born into it. The contracts are already settled, and until the Draco Empire falls of its own accord, you're stuck with it. And since their lifespans are half a million years. They're going to be around a lot longer than you are. So that's one of the things that you just have to say. We're stuck with that. That's a given. Draco are part of our lives. As long as we pay our taxes, they're not going to bother us. What do the Guardians say about the cause of us doing all this every now and then? Coming, I mean, going out into space and then you know causing all this mess and then coming back is it the genetics is it because we are not spiritually advanced enough what is it well they consider us a primitive race a primitive race okay uh we reach a certain level of technology usually with help and we burst out of out of our prison um, or in their term the guardians called it a playpen we break out of our playpen and they watch us for a while to see if we're going to do any better this time and when we don't they put us back in the playpen well there are too many of us to all fit on earth now so they're letting it be the whole solar system uh -huh. And the Oort cloud makes a perfect prison wall. And so we'll be allowed to keep whatever we have unless we manage to <sighs> manage to destroy ourselves, which it, they have said that no one will destroy us as far as all of us. Uh -huh. but they're not ruling out us destroying each other. Okay. The Zolheimen, then. Let's go back to the ship. In the Zolheimen, everything is a steel gray. Uh -huh. it, was, it was polished metal that had been sealed with the paint. So it, it was... A matte finish uh -huh. so it wasn't like shiny at you but it was this gray was everywhere uh, the upholstery on the seats was a lighter shade of gray so it wasn't just unicolor it was like there had been some thought put into designing the color scheme all the all the German facilities the place where you meet for the meeting at the beginning of your shift. Uh -huh. There's a podium in the front. 
and it has the banner with the swastika. Okay, so you've got this podium that's gray and it's got the red, white, and black banner with the swastika on it hanging up down the front. And when it gets frayed looking, they get a new one. This is to be kept. It's roughly their flag. Uh -huh. it, does, it doesn't mean the same thing as it did to the Nazis. Uh -huh. It's just like national emblem. Uh -huh. And then behind the podium, there's the big stylized eagle. And in its claws, it will hold an emblem. Now, if you're on a world, it will be a map of that world. Okay. If you're on a ship, it's usually the black sun knot. Uh -huh. It's not always. If your top officers are not black sun, then it won't have it. It'll have a symbol of Earth or there is a symbol for Bundes. It's it's a map of the galaxy with the area where the colonies are. Uh -huh. um, set they're set with with crystal, but they almost look like diamonds the way they've got them polished. So they'll have these little things in it. It's really pretty. And those are in the shiny metal gray. Briefings are done with holograms. And they're really good. The holograms. They're, the holograms are really good. That you actually, it's like a 3D video. Uh-huh. And so you know what's happening, what, what you're being shown, it's like you're there. And the German officer will give you the briefing in German. And there's some sort of a translator that will allow the people that don't speak German to hear it in their language. And why would you would have like what were you talking about slaves on the ship or people from other um, places, other countries? Or? The soldiers we carry are not always German. Okay, yeah. And they will have they will have commanding officers who will be privy to the briefings. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, or some of the briefings, there will be a point at which they're asked to leave, and the rest will be just for us uh -huh. but every shift at the beginning of it the officers have their own meeting and then there's a different meeting for the enlisted men uh -huh. and they're not in they're not told as much i see okay so um, the, you said that people from other places besides the americans who were there there were english australian um Anywhere from the entire British Commonwealth okay. uh, and any race from the entire mm -hmm. British Commonwealth. There were Chinese, there were Russians. On, on the Zoheimen, you mean? Mm-hmm. Okay. What were they doing there? They were also part of the, I guess, like a concession deal, contributing their troops to the Germans in space? or. You know, it was, it was one of those things that I didn't even question at the time. Uh -huh. It was, you're carrying so-and-so today. I see. But you saw, how did you tell, for example, okay, the Chinese are obviously, look, look, they, they obviously look Asian. How would you tell that th those were Russians, for example? The Russians wore green uniforms. Uh -huh. The Americans 
the ones embedded with us or blue uniforms, the ones that were not embedded with us, usually had an American flag on their shoulder. Uh, most, most of the peoples would have their flag, flag of okay. country so did the, origin. Did, on did the Russia has, have, have like a, back then, was it the USSR or Russia? Did you see any? If you did, well, if you, it, was, you know. it was the USSR mm -hmm. when I, well, I was, I was on the Zollheimen from 1990 to 2014. So I watched it change from Soviet Union to Russian Federation, mm -hmm. but we didn't understand the politics. Okay, right. But you saw, you know, but you we, saw the commanding officers there. Yeah. Okay. And what were they doing? Were they doing the I, same thing? I was a lieutenant. I was at the briefings for officers. Right. And so the commanding officers would be there also. So they would be going, whoever was on your ship then, they would be going together with the Germans as a drop, the, the troops mm -hmm. dropped on the planet to, to do a job, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. We would drop, we would drop the troops and their commanding officers on the planet, they would take care of whatever they were sent there to do. And as they captured prisoners of war, they brought them to us. And then when we had the hold was full filled, we would take them to one of the cyborg factories. And then we the ship would be filled with the cyborgs and we would have a destination to take them for sale. But the cyborgs were not the same as you brought in. You you take the cyborgs that were no, produced. It what? It takes time. Right, right, right. Okay. And uh, what what about Impressive. yeah? And what about the troops then? Do you would, would you drop them off back to Mars or some? Sometimes. Okay. Sometimes another ship would. Uh -huh. Okay. We weren't the only transport ship. Sure, of course. Yeah, so you drop them off some, somewhere, they would be taken somewhere else by others. Okay. In yeah. Interesting. So what was the capacity of the ship? How many people could you carry? You said it was almost a kilometer long. That means you could carry what? A couple thousand people? Well, we, had crew, we had a crew of about 500. Oh. So um, probably a thousand. A thousand, okay. That sounds right. So a drop off would be would they be dropped off in a on a on a smaller transport, uh, in a in I don't know, some kind of some kind of like a land surface transport or something. We could land on the surface. Oh, you could land. Okay. So you didn't you didn't. Yeah. Okay. So you didn't actually have to go to orbit and then drop them off to orbit. No, we were not dropping oh. them like rock. Well, right. <laughs> We could land, uh -huh. let let down the door, and let them walk out on their own power. Because you're, yeah. Because that that means that by that time the planet was already uh, cold. The there there was no resistance or any danger of you know uh, ground fire or anything. We had force fields. Okay. We had we had shielding. Uh -huh. We had. We had energy shielding, and if you're landing on a relatively primitive world, that that polished aluminum shimmering was terrifying. Oh my god! You know, you're you're landing on a world that that is basically at Earth level, and you're releasing military. And you have this shimmer on you, on this this mirror polished finish, and it's just it's extremely intimidating, almost as intimidating as the tear teardrop black ships. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this was this was it was a very simple design to be this just cylindrical balls on the end sort of shape and it was very simple very elegant and to a primitive world extremely intimidating the engines what were the engines like 
we had a better version of the bell, uh -huh. the Glocke. Uh -huh. uh, we had a lot better shielding on it. One or several? We had one at each end of the ship. Okay. And that was what was in the ends uh -huh. because that gave room for more shielding to protect the crew. We also had side engines that were plasma uh -huh. and they were directional and braking. I see. Because when you're out in space, you can't use friction to stop you. You have to use braking, you know, in engines that go the other direction. So uh, what else did we have? We had the hyperspace engine, of course. Uh, the temporal drives. Mm -hmm. We had... Um, what they're calling the EM drive. Electromagnetic? Yeah, it, we called it the copper microwave, but uh -huh. they're calling it the EM drive here, where you make a bell out of copper and you hit it with microwaves uh -huh. and it produces force. Um, so all, all of that on one ship you had to keep. Okay. You use them in different places. Uh -huh. right. And what was used for uh, jumping into hyperspace? What kind of drive would be activated? You would activate the EM drive uh -huh. if you could because it produces a beautiful teardrop-shaped field uh -huh. and it's safe to go into hyperspace inside that uh -huh. because if you go into hyperspace in an atmosphere you leave a hole that will suck the whole atmosphere off the planet oh right exactly. <laughs> don't want to do that <laughs> that's a big no-no yeah by the way the, you said you leave you leave a hole that never occurred to me so how soon would this hole be closed after you've left? Well, if it's sucking air, it won't. Oh. If it's if there's no substances, it closes right behind us. Oh, that's why you need this like the field which is what a warp? Is it a warp field or it's it's the field that's produced by the EM drive. Oh, okay. The, the electromagnetic shielding field. It's, an, okay. it's it makes a shielding, uh -huh. and and when I saw, oh gee, Elon Elon Musk had this launch that was supposed to be a big failure. He was supposed to be putting this satellite into space, and I saw this teardrop filled field form, and I went, oh my god! And then I saw the spiral uh -huh. in it, and I was like. That's an EM ship. Oh my god! <laughs> so it was. And I said, was supposed to... there was one in Florida, one in California, and there was one in Russia, and there was one in China. And I was in this group on Facebook, and I said, uh, "Earth level military has that that level of technology now. Mm -hmm. They have the big three have just tested it, so they all have it." And I could just imagine all the generals doing a happy dance because that's that's incredible technology. So, and that was supposed to be like look like a failure, like they have failed or something. It was. They were supposed to be. the The cover story was that they were putting a satellite in orbit and that it had basically failed at the second stage. <laughs> and it wasn't even it wasn't even that it was testing this engine oh my god and it's exactly what it was supposed to do every time all four times that i saw it tested it did exactly what it was supposed to do so what, can you repeat what what exactly happened how did it look and 
it it has this this you have it looks like a rocket uh -huh. coming up okay. and when the first stage detaches uh -huh. okay. then the little bit that comes up makes this crazy spiral uh -huh. and then it forms this huge teardrop shaped field uh -huh. And you can still see the original object in the middle. And then a, a distance away, you see this spiral uh -huh. of light form. Uh -huh. That spiral is a portal, a wormhole. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Happens every time. Okay. Amazing. So all these spirals that we saw on YouTube, the spiraling things, they were actually portal, portals opening? The ones related to the EM drive uh -huh. were. Okay. Uh, the portals that were related to HARP, uh -huh. those like the one that was in Sweden. The, I believe it was a, a light blue color. Uh -huh. That one, that one was also a portal, and I was looking at that guy. What, what do they think they're doing? Do they think they're hiding this? I mean, it's on YouTube for the whole world to see. So, so, <clears throat> so, you, you, so the EM drive creates this. You basically turn on a field that is a teardrop shaped field. Where does the portal come from? Do you open it with some other technology or? Well, we did. We opened it with another technology. But obviously, Elon Musk's group was was testing that uh -huh. because it showed up on the YouTube. Uh -huh. Beautiful. Uh -huh. So what do you do to turn the, the portal on, on to open that? Do you remember? It was a different button on the... <laughs> <laughs> that, that's another button, right? <laughs> it's another button. Okay, yeah. very good. I was in this chair that looked like a dentist chair, uh -huh. and I had mouse pads that were the same size as my hands with balls in the middle. Uh -huh. And... Okay. They worked in different directions, and I'm driving with my hands while I'm seeing because I'm chipped into the computer. So I'm seeing all of the 360 degrees everywhere, all the way around the ship. I can look at anything out there I want to while I'm trying to drive and steer away from from asteroids that aren't on the charts or energy feeders or if the energy feeder is too big I have to redirect everything around it because you really don't want to fight with these guys if you can help it <clears throat> and uh, I mean you heard me describe how big my ship was. Uh -huh. There were energy feeders out there big enough to eat it like it was nothing. Uh -huh. Okay. These are beings that have evolved in space to eat the energy plasma that is in space. You know, the, the stuff that comes off the sun. The currents that go through space. Right. And there are currents in space. You have to know where they are. That's one of the things that the computer keeps track of and just feeds you the information. Well, there's a current there. So if you get in that, you can go faster. But you also have to watch for the energy feeders if you do that. People don't realize. They think that because this is this is the first time we've been in space in their lifetimes that there's nothing out there. This isn't true. There have been some really nasty wars fought in the solar system. 
and not just one. There have been nasty wars every 50,000 years or so. Nasty wars. And there's derelicts all over the place. And you, they're not all charted. Uh -huh. So you have, you have to keep track of this stuff. Now, uh, there are groups out there, Planetary Corporations is one of them, who is making an effort to find all of these derelicts and take whatever tech they can identify off of it and then recycle the parts, you know, melt, them, melt down for the metals. So you, you couldn't leave the ship. Where, was the ship ever parked? I mean, landed on Mars? Okay. Yeah, we would land on Mars. Uh, Mars was considered our home base. Uh -huh. And uh, we weren't ever there very long. Uh, we were never there more than a day or two at a time. We were always on the move. This was some, you would think a troop transport, which is basically what we were, would uh, not be as busy as we were. But we took people all over the place. People, slave, well, soldiers, slaves, cyborgs. That's what we basically hauled. All over. All over the Draco Empire, all over where the German colonies were. And uh, we were usually in support of the Draco putting down a rebellion. And it, sounds, it would sound like that the Draco were losing control of their empire, except that you have to think in terms of how big the place was. There was no more than half a percent of their empire ever causing any problems. And we were kept busy all the time on that half a percent. The, the beings that you took, the prisoners, I assume they weren't all like humanoid, human looking mm -hmm. people. What were some of the types of beings that you saw? Like if you just do the typology, I mean, there, there are probably hundreds or, or dozens of them. What were the, the most, you know, standing out types? People are not going to like to hear this, but every, almost every animal on Earth has a sentient form in space. Uh -huh. There's that many different kinds. And there are, the big divisions are on what they breathe, what they're made out of. There are oxygen breathers, which is what we are. Uh -huh. But out of those, maybe 2% can tolerate nitrogen in the atmosphere. So our Earth atmosphere is poisonous to most of them. There are hydrogen breathers who live on the gas giants. There are methane breathers. Uh, there are underwater types, aquatics. And they have, the aquatic types have some of the best poets and historians in the entire galaxy. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking, these are beings with no hands. Uh -huh. you know, they can't write. They're completely telepathic. Uh, most of them also have a either a light language, as in they're bioluminescent, uh -huh. or they're doing a tonal language, which is sound. Oh, okay, sound waves, sonar, clicks. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, most 
communication in the galaxy is telepathic. So your average Joe Blow on the street is at a serious disadvantage. They're not even considered, they're considered too retarded to be communicated with, basically. And people are not going to like hearing that, but most humans are capable of telepathy. They just don't believe it when they hear it. And since we don't believe it when we hear it, we don't guard our thoughts at all. So when we go into a telepathic zone and we don't have the shielding up, those beings, it's like we're screaming every thought at them. Uh -huh. So they not only know that you think they're ugly, <laughs> right. they're weird looking. <gasps> oh my God, I'm scared. You know, they, they know that right off the bat because you haven't hit a thing even if you've kept your mouth shut. And They'll find out if you think their their smell is offensive. And to be honest, most of them think we stink. Uh -huh. Okay? Human body odor is a major problem for most ET races. Okay. Um, so the, 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 the people that you carry, the races, what were they like? The sizes, the shapes? What, what do you remember most standing out? What I remember most is they ranged from a meter tall to four meters tall. Uh -huh. And we had to arrange the bunk sizes accordingly. They were almost always telepathic. They were almost always terrified they had a pretty good idea of what their fate was going to be. There was no mercy given. Um, if they got too, bit, too panic stricken, we would put them in stasis. But that was for the benefit of the Germans, not for them. There were insect races. There were reptilians. There were mammals of every variety. Uh, they were almost all smarter than humans. Uh -huh. And the officers would taunt them with, if you're so smart, how did you get in this mess? You could have just told the Draco that you would stay and we wouldn't have been here. And almost all the op almost all the officers were equipped with some sort of device where the, that their words were interpreted into the native language of that uh -huh. that group. So they knew they were being understood. The Germans had tech so everybody could understand them when the Germans wanted them to. And then there were the people like me who were naturally telepathic because the CIA had modified it. Uh -huh. And so I would have to listen to these people and their hysteria. And it got harder and harder and harder over time to block it out. And when I would reach a certain level of they were driving me crazy, suddenly it would stop because the ship's computer had shut off my ability to hear it. But during that time frame, I was completely useless. And even as a navigator, because it, it was shutting off all of my psionics. It's like, you get one, you get them all. It wasn't different parts of my brain. So the computer would let me calm down, 
and then turn it back on because I still had to drive the ship. We weren't even torturing them. We took very good care of them on the way back, except for the office, the higher officers telling them they brought this on themselves. Was there any, any attempt on their part to negotiate with the Germans as they were going along? Always. Mm -hmm. They thought they were smarter than us. Okay. Always. This was something that they had to try every time. And so it, the, the officers, because they were black goo, uh -huh. because they were doing what they believed was their only course of action. Um, and that does make a difference if you think it's the only thing you're allowed to do. So, um, and we all had a chip in our head that if we went against orders, if we thought about Earth, if we thought about rebellion, if we thought about, if we thought about attacking another officer, uh -huh. uh, the chip would give us a steadily increasing headache until it would just drop us to the floor. And if we did it repeatedly, it would blow up our head. Uh, the same kind of chip that, that Tony talks about that they put into slaves, they put it into all of us. Rebellion was not an option. There is there are no Germans in any rebel alliance. Anyone who insists on that is out of his mind. It's not possible. Could they be the ship, Could they be de-chipped somehow? Someone would catch them and remove the chip or something. How do you How do you remove a chip that's buried inside your head, in your brain? The, the, if removing it would kill you. And it's too far in to remove it with magnets to deactivate it. Yeah. yeah, so they did you did you ever go what were they kept? I mean the prisoners were they kept in the like a passenger bay, a cargo bay? Was it separate from where you were? <laughs> so, it was separate from where I was allowed to go. But you could still you could still what see them? I could still hear them. Oh, you could still hear them in your head. Telepath. And you could you could see what they were like because you could have an image, right? So uh -huh. that was the image with the telepathy. So that wasn't via uh, that wasn't via any kind of uh, monitoring system or anything that you did it. No. Okay. That that's part of the telepathy. Uh, so you could you when, couldn't go to where they were or anything. It was off limits for you. It was off limits for me. I was allowed in my bunk room okay. that I shared with another woman who was also a navigator. And I was allowed in the officer's mess. Mm -hmm. And I was allowed at my workstation. And I was allowed at the bridge. And I was allowed at the beginning of the shift officer's briefings. Mm -hmm. And the hallways in between. That's it. I did not even have a run of the ship. Mm -hmm. So you've never been to any other parts? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I knew from the ship's computer graphics mm -hmm. where the engines were and what kind it was. But I didn't know the... I didn't know the... Um, engineering specs for them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so the beings that what, were there, I I see. Need to know. so the beings that were there, you could, you could only see them in your mind. You, you never saw them like on, on the surface or anything. You couldn't see any of that process. Okay. No. Um, 
during the morning, well, the shift me meetings, briefings, they would show us a hologram movie of who these people were, mm -hmm. why, why we were doing this, how many times that the Draco had appealed to them to change their minds, you know, all of that stuff. So they, they were pre prepping you for thinking that you actually did the right thing and it was all okay and was part of part of the job and there was nothing nothing mm -hmm. bad about it, right? Okay. So that these people brought this this on themselves. Um, Basically like well in America it would be the um National Guard coming in and doing a mop up mm -hmm. after a riot. Yep. Well the people are, are doing this, this, this and this. They deserve to go to jail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they deserve whatever they get. 